Have you ever smelled something so bad that it made you just question why you're even doing what you're doing? Have you ever been on a walk somewhere and just smelled the weirdest, most disgusting smell of your life? I'm sure you've accidentally walked into a bathroom one time and you had to think twice about whether or not you really had to go. There's been a few times when I've been doing chemistry where I've wondered the same thing. Why am I doing this? Is this even worth it? And honestly, the answer for most chemical reactions is if it smells that bad, it's probably not worth it. But despite that, if you have a job, you still have to do it anyway. So these are the chemicals that I had to work with when I was doing my research, even though I didn't really want to work with them. This part of the video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome with top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right in the US. Terra. The knife in the Terra box is made by Bare Bones, based in Salt Lake City. Forge. This Damascus steel knife is made by Buck and Bear Knives, located in Pennsylvania. Trail. The gut hook in the trail box is made by Titan International, located in Illinois. Carnivore. The American barbecue rub in the Carnivore box is made by the Great American Spice Co. in Rockford, Michigan. Every month, Bespoke introduces its members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more, even live oysters, based on a preference quiz that you fill out. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. Preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. In the past, I got the Hawker. It's this giant knife that's used for chopping up food, and we use it anytime we have large vegetables that we need to chop up. It also came with this delicious curry, and I definitely added too much of the spice because it was way too spicy for me. This month, Bespoke sent me the brew kit, and I guess I'm going to be brewing my very own pale ale in the near future. I like a good beer, and I bet any beer that I'm going to make will pale in comparison to the ones that I usually get, but I guess we'll have to see. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter code THATCHEMIST20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash thatchemist20. I want to thank Bespoke Post for their support of this channel. This is triethylamine. Triethylamine is a base that we use all the time in organic synthesis. It's one of the most common bases that we ever use, and the nice thing about it is you can evaporate it off afterwards. You can also wash it out if this reacts with acid, you can get it into water and remove it from your solution. But I said that you could evaporate this off, and when you evaporate it off, it smells terrible. It smells like dead fish, but not like a fishy, fishy smell. It's like this rotting, awful, corrosive, acrid fish smell. It's not good. I really hate the smell of triethylamine, and every time I smell it, I just go like Bleh. Triethylamine, it's pretty bad. It's not the worst one on here, but I hate it quite a bit. This is one that isn't like the worst ever. You just hate the smell of it. So why don't we put this one into like C tier. Fish live in the sea, it makes sense that this goes into C. Maybe you're a fan of Parmesan cheese. Maybe you're a fan of feet. If you're a fan of feet, you're going to have to explain why, because it doesn't make sense to me. But you know, there's some weirdos out there. If you're a feet person, sorry to say, it's a bit weird. Now, if you like Parmesan, on the other hand, I won't judge you too much. But if you like feet and Parmesan, you clearly have a kink for butyric acid. So butyric acid is a chemical that's present in Parmesan cheese. And there's this one experiment that undergrads do all the time in the chemistry lab where they make ethyl butyrate, which is this beautiful pineapple smelling chemical. I love the smell of ethyl butyrate. But unfortunately, to make that chemical, people need to use butyric acid. So inevitably, the whole department will smell like butyric acid in every chemistry building in the world for at least two weeks. So butyric acid's terrible. It's just overbearing. If you get it, you can't get rid of the smell. And I wouldn't even recommend anybody buying this for use at home because you'll never get the smell away and everyone around you will hate you. Butyric acid can go into B tier. B for butyric. Next, hydrogen selenide. Hydrogen selenide is arguably one of the most toxic selenium compounds to exist. Although, when I've looked into this in the past, it doesn't seem like there's any deaths associated with it, but I felt like I almost died the one time that I smelled this. Lab Coats, another channel on YouTube, has made this before. Small amounts of atmospheric moisture were able to react with the aluminum selenide, which in turn released a microscopic amount of its awful relative, hydrogen selenide. The levels weren't high enough to be immediately dangerous, but they were potent enough to be smelled, even through my respirator. Up close, it stank like rotten eggs, 
but further away, it smelled more like rotting garbage, and apparently, a microscopic amount of aluminum selenide managed to escape because for the next week or so, the residual stench of selenium continued to haunt my garage. When I accidentally made some of this during my research, it just hit the back of my throat and it wouldn't go away. The pain stayed and it lasted for like a day or two. It was like I suddenly had the flu. This stuff is pretty scary and it also smelled bad and felt really acrid at the back of my throat. This can go right into S tier. Nobody should ever smell this. This is not meant for human consumption. None of these are meant for human consumption uh, and neither are feet. Feet are not meant for human consumption either. Please do not consume feet. Okay, trimethylamine. Trimethylamine has your classic fishy odor. I had to work with this a lot when I was making these tetramethyl ammonium salts. The tetramethyl ammonium salts were actually tetramethyl ammonium trifluoromethoxide, and trifluoromethoxide easily decomposes into fluorophosgene. You might have heard of phosgene before. It was that gas used in the world wars as a chemical warfare agent, and fluorophosgene's the same thing, but it's just got fluorine instead of chlorine. Now, I was aware of that, and so I was scared when I was working with these compounds, oh, I better be careful, you know, this fluorophosgene is a big concern but it turns out that the tetramethyl ammonium is also a nerve agent, and my supervisor never told me that. So thanks for that. Yeah, it's probably good to know that people in your lab are working with 10 grams of something that's arguably a nerve agent. It's basically the same as acetylcholine. So yeah, that's great. And on top of that, the starting material's a gas, so I had to use this stupid setup just to work with it, because the stuff can only be manipulated as a gas. And then the whole lab smells like fish afterwards, and there's e there was even samples that were like 10 years old that still smelled like fish. So trimethylamine, it's terrible. You hate the smell of fish, you will hate the smell of trimethylamine. It can also go right into S tier. Here's acrolein. You might have heard of acrolein before. It's one of the main chemicals that amateur chemists will make on YouTube, and it's often prepared from glycerin. The thing about acrolein is this double bond here is super reactive, and that means it reacts with your body, and it's super bad, it's a lacrimator, and if you haven't worked in a lab before, if you've ever burned fat, like, for instance, if you've somehow ever toasted toast that already had butter on it, I'm definitely not saying this from personal experience, when the butter hits the element and the whole house starts smelling like the worst ever, that's the smell of acrolein, so you've probably smelled this before if you're as dumb as I am. And acrolein is another one that no one should smell. It's super bad smelling, it can go right into A tier. I still think the trimethylamine is worse because it just endures for so long, but if you've accidentally burned some butter in your house before, and your toaster oven got really hot really quickly, you'll be reminded of it for the next few days. Speaking of butter, we have this other chemical that's often used in butter-flavored vapes, and it's also used in several microwave popcorns. Some people really like this smell, but I can't stand it for the life of me. I was using this as a photocatalyst for some chemistry I was doing when I was an undergraduate researcher, and a single drop of this stuff anywhere in the lab, and the whole lab reeks of microwave popcorn. I personally hate the smell of microwave popcorn. Now, I like butter. I am a butter guy. But this specific compound is like rotting butter, and it that is not something I want to smell when I'm working in the lab. It's not something I want to smell when I'm in a movie theater. So people who are using diacetyl, butane dione, get your act together. This is not good stuff. It's not as bad as like trimethylamine, but it's just so enduring. The one theme that a lot of these chemicals have is that their smell, that their effect endures. They just last for a really long time and they don't go away. So butane dione, diacetyl, that can probably go into B tier. B for butane dione. Next, we have this strange looking sulfur fluorine thing. This is called a fluorothioneformate. That's got a really weird, strange name because chemists aren't good at naming stuff. It's not about accessibility, it's about precision. For who precisely? Nobody precisely knows. So I had made this from the corresponding chlorothioneformate, where there was a chlorine there before the fluorine. That one didn't smell too bad. That's occasionally used for something called barton mccombe deoxygenation. But when I made the fluorine version, it smelled nothing alike. It smelled a bit sulfury, but it was really acrid, and I just smelled a little bit of it, not even like close to my nose, just like, gently wafted towards my nose, and the smell was strong, it stayed there for the rest of the day, and it didn't get weaker in intensity. It was driving me crazy. I'm convinced that this would drive someone to go mad, maybe even to the point of suicide if they had to smell this. So I really hate this chemical. I made a total of three compounds like this, and every single one of them had this problem. I absolutely hate this chemical. This is like super S tier. We're gonna stick it halfway out of S tier because of how bad it is. This is a terrible chemical, and it hates humanity. At least it hates me. Another really common base in organic chemistry is pyridine. Pyridine is nice because it's a relatively weak base, but it's also a nucleophile, and that can mess up some chemistry. 
Sometimes it's actually used because it's a nuchal file, but this is another one that smells like rotting dead fish. It's a little bit like if you ever have that weird smell in your freezer, just eventually if you like take something out of the freezer, it's like obtained a weird strange smell. It's kind of like fishy, kind of smells like B vitamins. That's like a pyridine smell to me, except pyridine on its own is so strong and awful that every time I work with it, it's like eh, disgusting. Just get that away from me. And oftentimes I had to use this in my chemistry because no other base worked. So uh, thanks chemistry. The worst part is to get rid of this, I'd have to evaporate it off before I purified my compounds by chromatography. Calm chromatography is a way that we purify stuff in the lab, especially as organic chemists. And inevitably I never could get rid of it all. So I would do my column, purify my sample, but then this stupid thing would still show up when I was analyzing my fractions, because guess what? This is UV active. It would come through the column as well, along with my sample. So afterwards, after I did my column, after I purified my sample, I would still have to purify it again, because this stupid stuff would still be there. Fortunately for the purification in those cases, I could just add toluene to it and evaporate it off, but to make sure it was all gone, I had to do it by smell. So I hate pyridine. Pyridine can go into B tier. B for boy, I hate your guts. Next, we have propargyl bromide. This is a common reagent for alkylating stuff. Synthetic chemists use this all the time to add a three carbon unit, but unfortunately, this is a lacrimator. This is like a tear gas. It's a really good electrophile. This reacts really great in chemical reactions, including ones involving your body. So not a great chemical, pretty offensive, and it will make you cry because you have to keep working with it, and it's a lacrimator. Propargyl bromide. You can go into like A tier. This is another one that's pretty offensive, similar to acrolein. This one here is a little bit more strange. We've got this chlorine, we have a carbonyl, and two OH groups. This might remind you a little bit of adrenaline. Maybe because it's related to adrenaline, I'm not quite sure. When you work with this, it makes you sneeze like crazy. This isn't even volatile like the other ones we were talking about. This is a solid. So just the trace amounts of powder that this gets into the air are enough to make you sneeze uncontrollably. And one of the undergrad researchers who I was supervising at the time when we were working with this was like, I think we have a sneezing agent. I'm like, that's so dumb. I've never heard of a sneezing agent before. That, that can't exist. And sure enough, after he finished his research, I had to reproduce some of his experiments and it indeed is a sneezing agent. I was sneezing uncontrollably, and this was verified by a number of people in our lab. I do hate this one, but it also perplexes me. So I don't hate it the same way that I hate the other ones, because it's a little bit interesting. It makes you sneeze uncontrollably. That's not necessarily something you want to do, but it's still interesting nonetheless. So why don't we put that one right into F tier? Are you a fan of Hawkins cheesies? I am, but I'm not a fan of isovaleryl chloride. Isovaleryl chloride, also known as isoamyl chloride or isopentanoyl chloride, has a specific smell between wet dog and Hawkins cheesies specifically. Why Hawkins cheesies specifically? I have no idea, but it has that exact smell. This is another one that I hate and lingers, and I really dislike the smell of wet dog. It's just so disgusting and off-putting, and this is a reagent you occasionally have to do when you're making molecules in the lab. So this one's also pretty bad. This is like butyric acid's cousin, but like the wet dog version, but I have no idea why it smells so much like Hawkins cheesies. Maybe eventually, if I ever get my own lab, we'll have to do some analysis of cheesies to figure out what the heck that smell is. We can put this one into B tier along with butyric acid because it smells similar to butyric acid, but with more of like a wet dog vibe, less of a foot vibe. Maybe it's like the smell of a dog's wet foot. Last but not least, we have this phosphorus pentamer. There's five phosphoruses in a ring here, which I bet you're thinking there's no way that that can exist. The way that this is made is by taking the corresponding phosphorus with two chlorines and making five of those react together in the presence of a reducing agent, such as a metal like zinc or magnesium. This smelled like burning plastic, but in a way that doesn't quite capture its smell. This smelled uniquely bad in a way that I've never smelled any other chemical smell before. I personally really hated the smell, and no matter what we would do to try and seal this in like a container with tape, multiple layers of container, the smell would always get out. And not only the smell, there would always be some residue that would sublime its way through the tape and so it would get on your gloves, and then your gloves would smell like it until you replace it. And after you replace your gloves like five times, you feel a bit of glove guilt. So this is another really annoying stupid compound. And you remember hydrogen selenide, that one I was talking about earlier? Well, the reason I was able to smell that is because I had to turn this into another chemical that released hydrogen selenide. This is another chemical that can go right into S tier because nobody should smell this, nobody should work with this. I hate all of these chemicals. And if you hate some of these chemicals, you can share your hate down in the comments. Thanks for watching, thanks for hating, and I hope you have a great day.